You ready, Fetty? Yes, sir. We're going. We're going. We're All doing right. it. We're doing it live. We're rolling already? What's up, guys? Larry Chen here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're featuring a Ferrari, but not any Ferrari. We're featuring Fiorella. Fiorella, exactly. Fiorella. So this is my buddy Federico Sharifo. Hi, everybody. The sheriff. He's the first person in Formula Drift to bring a V12. This thing is absolutely insane. It's evolved quite a bit. It's over evolved the years. quite a bit in the years. This is technically, we can say, the base of the power plant is always the same, right? It's always the same V12. But first we were supercharged. Then we went NA nitrous. And now we are turbo. With the, with the nitrous still on it, but it's really way more than enough. You're already crazy in that you brought a supercar to compete in Formula Drift, but now you've had a couple years under its belt and you've been able to evolve it. This is just so cool. On top of that, I absolutely love, love, love the throwback Ferrari livery. Thank you. So, cause I've originally, this livery was on an F40, right? Yes, it was the Montechel F40 that competed in 19, 89 right and i think it done like 10 or 11 races and it won all of them and then nobody kind of brought it back or they did some similar stuff so i thought it was great it's not a secret that we both work with Pennzoil and shell and yep. it's just so awesome to be able to work with a company that loves racing so much. Exactly. They love cars. Yes. They are for the enthusiasts. Yes, yes. And also, actually, the idea was pitched by them. And I said, what a great idea. I didn't think about it. So with Andrea, we gave birth to this uh, amazing, amazing. It looks so good. It does. So can we take a look under the hood? Let's of see course what we it can. looks like now. Straight oh, up. There you it. go. Then careful. Then there you go. Just put it on the ground or what? All right. Yeah. OK. All right. Jeez. What is going on here? <laughs> look at that. What the heck is this? Is this a horn? So she became like a unicorn now. Fiorella was already a unicorn, but now she literally became a unicorn. We had to make something that was not only functional, you know, because we need to perform, first of all, but it looks awesome. It looks awesome. What is this? She's Fiorella version La Rabbiata. It means the angry one, La Rabbiata. Is this the original block, the original motor that you started in? Formula yes, Drift? I have two engines, right? So this is actually the second engine that hold is on, a little bit, on. yeah. So you're not the only V12 now. No, I'm not the only V12. There's another one. Right? Just an Aston Martin pass. Yeah, look what you started. If I broke a taboo, right, that supercars can't drift or supercars are not for drifting environments, well, we started. Good. Bring I them threw, off. I threw a little snowball, you understand, that is growing down the hill. Yeah. Yes. This is a single turbo setup, Yes, huh? it's a single turbo setup because together with FuelTech, that joined, I joined forces, they're my sponsor, my engine management sponsor. We had the crazy thought of not losing the sound, doing as much symmetric uh, the headers as possible that combine on the central turbo. The turbo, we set it low for the um, weight distribution, okay? That's a, <laughs> that's a five inch. Oh my and, God. We're in America. Yeah. Uh, the bigger, the better. Yeah, yeah. Okay? You see the turbo, it's big. Yeah. It's better. I see that. You taught me this. Yeah. What do you want now? <laughs> we got the electronic Westgate on the cold part, my dear, which nobody ever done that before. Why? Because I keep the turbo always spinning like an anti-lag, but without the suffering the heats of the anti-lag. That's an E-gate from TurboSmart that I manage with the fuel tech. And I have my normal gate that in case, you know, you guys say something hits the fan, right? I have a backup plan. Got it. Okay. She's wild. There's just so much going on here. I don't even know where to start. The air goes in there, right? And yep. then this, the, the intake goes in here. So cold side. Wow, that is just so crazy. Yep. That is just incredible. I can't believe it. I redesigned the lower arms. Yeah, put a little bit of carbon just to make it look better. Did you have a chance to dyno it in this configuration? It made me cry. 
I cried because I went on the dyno and the numbers are not only amazing, it's how we get the power. So at 10 pounds of boost, we're doing 1100 and 25 horsepower to the wheel and a thousand and five foot pounds of torque. So how so, much more is that versus stock? Double, but stock, they sell the cars so you could like forget it on idle outside the grocery store for a day or you can have a long journey. They're very reliable cars, you know? So it's probably under power more than 50%. This is what they've told me personally. In terms of internals, it's really not really touched then, huh? No, it's not touched. Um, also because we're not running a lot of boost, okay? And anyway, there are titanium components inside an engine like this. The studs are high-performing studs already from, from stock. Of course, it depends what you want, you know? But these are real... Uh, it was meant for more power yes but it was in a street car this exactly. obviously is not a street car not anymore at least right this is way beyond that and uh you can actually kind of push the limit of what the exactly engine is capable of e exactly we arrived there step by step but i got really amazing people on board fuel tech like really knocked it out of the park we had uh, brian and anthony doing all the fabrication back at home but let's say all the direction of what was supposed to be done and how and why, and it all came from fuel tech. So I'm, I'm pretty hyped up. What did you have to do suspension wise to make this into a drift car? Well, I needed, of course, to get more steering. So that, that's a, a lot to do with the knuckle. And then I, more I drove it, I figured out what were the problems on uh, the lower arms, because a lot to do with the drift car is also about the lower arms. So with Brian from XX Motorworks, we studied a new design of the arm. We actually put beefier um, Heims, you know, so I can do a little bit more uh, body contact, you know, to be honest. I also love the fact that you kept the Ferrari brakes. Yes. Yeah, so cool. Yes. So then, this has always had a rear radiator setup. Yes, always had the rear radiator setup. Can or, we take a look at it? Sure. Which you can't really see much, but. So, I'm gonna make you laugh now. What's that? That's a Ford truck fan. No way. I swear to God. And it's one of the most powerful fans that you can buy around. It really literally almost moves the car. The question is why this Ferrari? I mean, you're Italian. I understand you want to have an Italian car. Yeah. Be true to your roots. Yeah. You could have gone with an Alpha. Sure. Right? You could have gone with, I don't know, you could have even gone with a Fiat if you wanted. Sure, to. sure, sure, sure. Well, at that time, this was the car to go. And it's, it's not only my personal choice. We are a group of car enthusiasts that gave birth to this project, right? And so the car that we found ourselves more in common was this one. And at that time, I mean, I think the 812 was not even out yet. So this was like the deal. So what year is this? She's a 2011, I would say. And we purchased it in 2016. Because this started life as a street car. Dude, it was a perfect black with a biscuit inside interior. 599 like Amazing. beautiful she is still beautiful we didn't ruin her but i'm just saying she was a perfect car so you left part of the stock dash yes huh? yes well big part all the all the above is okay. the stock dash we just added a few plates here and there just to make it you know a little bit something transmission hollinger transaxle um six speed and i mean it's it's, I mean, one of the best in the biz, to be honest, still. Is this what you started with when you yes, built this? Yes, yes. This is what I started with. We're still hanging on to him. He's behaving really well. We refreshed him once. He's behaving really well. It's crazy because there's no one else that dressed Ferraris. I mean, there, there have been and there are some. There's actually like two in Japan, which one is almost a road legal 360. And the other one is a 575 with a GTR engine. Dude, how, I mean, I, I love GTRs. I love, 
I'm a GDM freak and everybody knows that. But a, a GTR engine and R35 in a 575, no. Like, no, no, dude, <laughs> no. So I guess that didn't really take off. And, you know, it's easy to give up with an idea like this. You understand? When you start understanding like that, you open internet, there is nothing aftermarket for it. You can't call nobody and ask them directions. Even some probably work groups with uh, budgets, it's just the headache that makes them give up. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm. Have you talk to anybody from Ferrari what do they think about what you're they saying? love it so they love Fiorella of course I mean I'm I'm approaching everything step by step okay because sometimes they say like hey uh, you know what was Ferrari say why they are not they suing you I mean guys they also approved Ferrari had to approve Fiorella for Forza oh come that's on a good point. right so anybody who has Forza, they can drive this car. Exactly, exactly. In this configuration, because on Forza, she is turbo, twin turbo, okay? Like the original supercharged, but it's like turbo in, in the game. So I guess she's like now, she drives like now. So uh, thanks God, I get now to drive the one that they always drove in the game with no problems, boost and fun. <laughs> <laughs> so how much does this weigh? 31.40, not a lot. And actually she used to weigh 2,900 before. So that means what class tire are you in? Two, I'm in a 310. Or a 315. 310. Oh, 310 mil. We got the sticker oh, yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 310. Got it, got it. Got yeah. It. So it has to be not the actual size of the, what it says on the side of the tire. It's actually the measured width. Yes, yeah, Kevin yeah. doesn't care what's written yeah. beside the tire. Right, He's yeah. going to measure it. Huh. We actually passed tech at the first shot. I'm so happy. I'm so I'm so excited this season. I swear. Yeah. I mean, I've always been excited with, of course, a you know back voice always uh, with me, and we should do this to the car. We should do that to the car. We should do this, you know, do that. And then at the same time, another voice telling me, "Be patient. Be patient. Be patient." I think we are here now, and it's the moment to do Very our cool. job. Well, it's great to have you in the series. I think it's really cool. Thank to you, Larry. See somebody do something unique you know because it's too easy to get something that's already proven right right it's too easy to just get a s chassis maybe with a 2j you know it's proven and obviously it works well you of know, course it's of championship course and winning. it's also fun to yeah. drive at yeah. a certain point you know championship winning it's yep. still very cool but it's just not unique no and you're fighting the good fight and it's an uphill battle for you without a doubt yes. but i love love the fact that it's so unique and it looks amazing when it's out there it sounds good too yes it does thank you because what you're saying now it's what other car enthusiasts say that gives me that vibe that spark to continue doing it and doing it again and again and again and better a little bit better a little bit better because the faces that I get when she comes out of the trailer, the fans come after the autograph session. It's it's priceless, I swear it's priceless. Awesome, well, thank you so much for showing us this. Good luck this weekend. Thank you, thank you, Larry. Bye, guys.